So, you know, GIS, geospatial is a niche. It sits in the geospatial GIS department or mapping department. It's sold to those guys that get it. It's all complicated to use. So we put ourselves in a, in a corner now. So organizations, companies like Esri have, have realized that the value is greater than just being stuck in the mapping department. So how do we get it out and integrate in, into the wider enterprise? And you, one could argue that GIS is a departmental based solution. Um, it's called enterprise, but it's, I don't think it's not widely used across the enterprise. We've tried different ways to bring it out of the GIS department. You know, GIS manager, you should be doing more. You need to lead more, all these good conversations. But um, in reality, it hasn't made a big imprint there. Hi, that was Matt Sheehan. He is the host of the Geospatial Next podcast and a strategist at Locana, a location technology services company based in the Denver, Colorado area. Matt and I take on the notion that geospatial technology is now indispensable to most government or private industry organizations and challenge the notion that geospatial is just about maps. In fact, it can not only be about visualization if it has become an indispensable part of mainstream enterprise computing solutions, such that everyday knowledge workers will adopt it as a differentiating technology for a continuous business innovation. So you won't want to miss this episode of On Point with Karem. Well, Matt, uh, we got a few interesting topics to talk about today, but first let's uh, just start off with a brief introduction of uh, who you are, what you do, where you've been, and where you work. Yeah, I worked for Lacana, used to be Critogen. Uh, long, my gray beard shows the long history in GIS. I came to America from England in 1991, did a physical geography degree at Atlanta University, did a GIS degree at the University of Utah, where I chose to write a GIS web application long before people had heard of that stuff. In fact, my professor gave me a hard time about doing that, but I used technology that was around in 1996, which was pretty crude, but that was my first work in GIS. So saw the web, well, um, actually, yeah, I saw because I'm, I'm in Utah, we were one of the nodes on the ARPANET network. So I saw that early, saw this GIS thing, and I thought, oh, let's bring those two things together. So I probably lived my career looking a little bit further ahead, the internet being the first phase of that. And then I, I built a company called Web Map Solutions when I saw the first Actually, it wasn't when I saw, saw, saw the first iPhone. It was more when I saw the first iPad because I thought big real estate, GPS built in. This is going to be a game changer for our industry. So, uh, so that's that. And now my work is really focused around, I would say, integration. That's probably the best summary of what I do at Lacana. Is I'm focused more around how we bring GIS to the wider organization and the ability of, of integration to help bridge that gap. So, that's me. Well you know, some interesting things just came out of what you said. I know what we want to talk about. And one of the things we discussed about talking about was about where geospatial fits. But but you brought up something interesting there about, you know, where we kind of both came from in this industry. You, you said you had a degree in, in GIS. My degree was in geospatial. And when anybody ever asked me what you should do if you think this technology is really great, should you major in a discipline or should you major in GIS? Um, maybe one minute on that would be great. <laughs> oh, now you got me thinking. Well, I think the value, I think the GIS, when I bumped into GIS, I thought this is fantastic. It's in the geography department, I'm a geographer. Wonderful. And I realized not to be critical of GIS, I was becoming a map maker and I'm, I was never a map maker as a GIS, as a geographer. I think geographers are really good at connecting dots and thinking sort of widely about things. Uh, so your question is a good one. I, I, I think that geospatial thinking is valuable and that doesn't need to be in a geography department. I don't think button pushing is super valuable and I've been harsh there, but if you're only learning software and pushing buttons, I don't know much use in that. I think less and less so. I think the ability to think through a problem, connect dots and leverage technology like GIS is much more valuable. Yeah, I, I would agree. And of course, I, you know, I, my degrees are in geology, but I was a computer geologist and I never really 
banged on a lot of rocks. So uh, I, I, I can only barely call myself a geologist. Uh, but, um, but, you know, it's, it's interesting. I always say to, to students in particular, major interdiscipline, you, you can pick up the tool later. Yeah. But, but, you know, major in forestry or biology or urban yeah. planning or something. And then, you know, you can use the, you, you'll find the tools. And it's funny, you know, I was talking to a colleague earlier and we were regarding uh, our past history around remote sensing, which we both did. And, and you know, now uh, the, the, what we learned was image classification of satellite imagery, except now they call it machine learning and AI. It was like, oh, I'm really a data scientist. Now. <laughs> I got to update my resume, you know, like, and demand a lot more money, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, that's funny, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's funny. It's, it's just a comical sidebar. But anyway, let's jump into the topic. I think what we wanted to really focus on was, and we'll start with this question about whether geospatial technology is now becoming invisible or maybe invisible, but indispensable or both, or where is it fitting in this ecosystem that we find more companies into, which is very IT focused, very data focused. And all of a sudden they run against this discipline called geospatial. And uh, I think a lot of companies are finally like waking up. Like wh wh where do you think uh, these industries are, where these companies are? You know, I, I hear the term, and we use it at Lacana quite a bit, this sort of inflection point. What does that actually mean? You know, we're in an industry in an inflection point. Is that an, a technology inflection point? Is that a business inflection point? I think all of the above. I, um, I, was, chat I was just at the Esri conference in Palm Springs, so I went to the developer conference and the, and the partner conference, and there were conversations I had there around... Is there a are, is data science and geospatial science on a collision course? And I was thinking about that because the data scientists don't really care it's geospatial data. They're focused on the data per se, and they're learning geospatial. The geospatial folks are very focused on location and, and, and are telling the story about how important location is to run a business. I don't know who's going to win the battle. I suspect the geospatial, I suspect the ge data scientists are going to win that with geospatial helping to educate those folks on the value of it. So to get to your question, I think organizations are realizing the value of geospatial, but it may, may not be coming through the lens that we're seeing it through. It may just be this natural evolution of data scientists looking at the data and saying, you know, this locational piece here doesn't mean that we're not relevant, but I Again, using the term that um, one of my, my friend Jim Young said, he suspects that they're on a, a collision course and, uh, and, and geospatial isn't going to win. So, um, so I, I don't know where we quite sit, really. And, and as an industry, I don't know where we sit. In terms of the value of the data, undoubtedly people are realizing how valuable the data is. I, I think from that perspective, there, there's, there is evidence out there about where these other data platforms sit, whether that's a, a Databricks or a Snowflake. And they are now uh, providing the capability to do spatial processing, or at least handle spatial data. And the I, I don't know if the geospatial vendors are being dragged along, but if you look at a, a company like Cardo, that's now providing spatial extensions into those data platforms, um, it's true, there is a bit of a collision, but there is, I think, an acceptance that um, we need to provide those extensions because there are still things that we do in geospatial querying, spatial thinking, I, I think you referenced that, that we need to be uh, have that capability to say, I wanna create a spatial query, but I need a lot of data. So let me you know, go through an extension, create the query, go retrieve the data, and then have it you know, come back to us, or or have it reside there for future use. But uh, I, it, it is kind of a collision course. And then I do believe there's more acceptance, but I also think that um, it it's, has taken the, the IT people a little bit of time to find acceptance among us. We've always known the value. It, it's just that I'm, I, I think that now they do also recognize yeah. the value. Yeah, which is yeah little, I would agree. I, mean, I think they'll complement one another at some point. I mean, if we're on a collision course, 
you know, that means potentially there's a winner and a loser. I don't think there is going to be a winner and a loser, but I take to your point, and again, I'm thinking about Jim Young, his, his company's Atomic Maps, he used to work for Esri, super smart guy. That's the focus of his work is, as he says, to bring the analytics to the data, which is what you've said, you know, we'll do it in these non-GIS platforms because they've got all these capabilities. But then once you've done the heavy lifting over there, you then bring that to a GIS or to a BI platform to then do the next piece of the puzzle. So I think there's a complementary place to that. But at the minute, it feels as though they're competing one or with one another. And I don't think over time they will. Then it begs a question, where, where does GIS sit in that bigger conversation? Still important, but it doesn't sit at the center. I mean, GIS has always sort of positioned itself at the center. It's not really at the center. It's a complementary player within that bigger ecosystem. Yeah, you know, so again, you just said kind of interesting thing. And maybe we have become way too geocentric in thinking because our paradigm has always been the map. And you said before you were a button pusher, didn't want to be a map maker. And we have, for better or worse, stuck, you know, put a stake in the ground about map visualization. And I don't believe that is where the IT people are. They, they could care less about the map. It's, it's an interesting uh, output of what the spatial processing would be. But as, as I know, and in my experience in talking with insurance companies or banks, they don't care about the visualization part of it so much as they care about the answers coming out of the process. So I, I think that we, we're, we've sometimes you know, put ourselves in a little bit of a box with saying geo and you know, associated ourselves too much with the visualization part. Yeah. On the other side of that, Matt, is the BI people who said, hey, we need map visualization. If we don't, we're missing out on something that the GIS people already have and yeah. also do. And, and so at one of the topics, just to kind of segue is this assumed mapping capability or at least querying capability that understands geo in these BI platforms. So yeah, 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 there is that collision, but there's also, we've stuck ourselves in a bit of a box. I, I think we have, yeah, I think we have. I mean, I think it goes back to that. And that's where one of your colleagues wrote the article that included Invisible in the title, Joe, which is a really good article. I encourage people to read if they haven't read it. Um, that really caught my attention because there's two types of invisible, really. Um, my friend, Miles Sutherland says, talk about the invisible map, which is, the data really, I'm ultimately saying this geospatial data when he says invisible map. And uh, there's where our value really lies. We too spend too much time focused on the output, which is a map and not enough time on, uh, on the underlying real value, which is the data. And by the way, it's multi-dimensional data now, not just two-dimensional data, it's 3D and real-time 4D data. So we've got this new mix of tsunami of new data that we're automatically collecting. But then on the front end, yeah, we, we pigeonhole ourselves in being map people. Um, and I think if visualization is at the core of BI, which it is, and they've added maps, there's still the analytics that Geospatial provides that the BI platforms don't. So maybe if the heavy lifting's done, you know, within non-native or non-geospatial solutions in the cloud, et cetera, when it comes down and out, there's another level of analytics, which is very specific around geospatial, the output, I mean, I, I've railed on this too often, but we, we talk, I mean, if, if an MBA said I'm a charting guy, you know, they, they would never say they're a charting guy because under their value is completely lost. If we call ourselves mapping people, our value is completely lost and we have to get away from that. So um, invisible map on the front end I like as well and as, as much as I like invisible map on the back end. Um, it's kind of funny, you know, one of the things that we've discussed uh, just briefly among ourselves at Karem is um, how we position ourselves with um, what we would we would call a solution as data as a service. And we're, we're busy trying to define what exactly that means for us. And we've come across some interesting de definitions, maybe I would say sub-definitions, data as a service being uh, integrating, conflating, uh, create them customized, what we would call data cuts or you know, cookie cutting out data and providing that as a bulk service to people. And then there's the subdiscipline of data science as a service, which is I'm going to create a, a, a solution architecture, 
create a process and maybe give you an output and then provide you with you know that service could be a, a, a virtualization of those services but and and then there's more like uh, you know uh, whatever you want to call it uh, data answers as a service where you really go down the pathway of uh, you know giving them the answer giving them the output not just the capability to do it themselves and um, I do think maybe that is where we are. I mean, and, and again, to the point of being invisible, um, you know, here, here it is, you know, here, here's the data, here's the answer, and it just happens to be geospatial data. Yeah, I, you, actually, that you moved my mind forward on that one because we chatted about that, didn't we, when we last spoke. And, uh, you know, we often hear the data's a value, and I said the data's a value, undoubtedly. And, yet, and yes, we've now got this mix of new data that we can bring to the conversation, no longer just two-dimensional data. And then, you know, I've heard people say, well, what customers really want is information. And you said, no, actually what they really want is an answer to a question. And, and I totally agree with you. I mean, you made me think about that. Like really, ultimately, people do want an answer to a question. And, you know, a map, I'm not going to go back onto maps, but I mean, that question might be a yes, no. Um, you know, it could easily just be a, a, an answer to a question that you ask, um, you know, one of um, one of these Alexa or something, and it's a geospatial answer that comes back. It, 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 it so yeah, I would I, answer as a service, geospatial answer as a service. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I love that idea. Well, and and you know, you know, we're, we may be getting to that point. Uh, if, if people are, or people, if companies are too siloed in their way they're going about collecting data, they're going to need more than just the geo data. They're going to need, a, you know, corporate data integrated with that as well. So yeah. I, I do believe that, you know, that there are many companies that just don't know what, what to do with all that data. I mean, let's take insurance yeah. companies yeah. as an example, who I, I, I still believe they probably don't believe, but I think they're a naturally geographic business. Oh, totally. Right? Completely right? You, you can't yeah. underwrite a policy and all that. But now yeah. they're starting to want, you know, get, you know, drone data, satellite data, and, and looking at, at catastrophic events and doing it quickly, doing appraisals quickly, doing uh, claims more quickly. You know, think of all that data that they're not used to handling and now need to handle, even to the point like um, in claims where, they have they need a POI database of their preferred repair shops. Yeah. You know, right? Are you close to my repair shop? And are they offering you decent rates for, mm -hmm. you know, if your car was in a crash or needs repainting? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's a that's a very simple geographic answer, but I, I doubt if they look at it that way. But again, here's one of those situations where they're going to assume that that kind of capability is built in if they want yeah. quick service. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I mean, I agree. And, and I think um, it, it's that, again, I'll go back to the, the Esri conference because, you know, I was there for, for a week nearly. Uh, picking things, just listen to the, the conversations. The, the two terms that came up in multiple plenaries, in multiple sessions I was in was inter integration and enterprise. So, you know, GIS, just spatial is a niche. It sits in the GIS, just spatial GIS department or mapping department. It's sold to those guys that get it. It's all complicated to use. So we put ourselves in a, in a corner now. So organizations, companies like Esri have, have realized that the value is greater than just being stuck in the mapping department. So how do we get it out and integrate in, into the wider enterprise? And you, one could argue that GIS is a departmental-based solution. Um, it's called enterprise, but it's, I don't think it's not widely used across the enterprise. We've tried different ways to bring it out of the GIS department. You know, GIS manager, you should be doing more. You need to lead more. All these good conversations, but um, in reality, it hasn't made a big imprint there. A lot of my focus uh, currently is is to actually build into these business systems like SAP, uh, Salesforce, etc. This connection between GIS and and business systems. So uh, we we built some kind of really interesting technology that does that, but why is there value to that? Well, I look at workflows and I think, well, if you've got business workflows, enterprise asset management is a sort of a more obvious one. Can you inject a map, an answer to a geospatial question within an existing workflow? So you're working with folks that are already using tools, but you're, you're adding that geospatial dimension to that that may help them get to 
it took, it took them five steps to get somewhere. It takes them two steps. So I think that the if GIS brings the where and the what surrounds an asset, what it's connected to piece of the puzzle and some attributes, the what sits in business systems. And if you bring that stuff together, you're going to bring in a different audience than the traditional users. So sort of that's been a lot of my work over the last year or so is to start doing those that piece of the puzzle and telling business or talking business with business folk where geospatial is let's use that word invisible it's not invisible but to them it's invisible we don't leave with a map we leave with a workflow and and the natural part of that workflow is geospatial right right that, and, and that's the way it has to be but but I, I have to say that if we stay siloed as a GIS department we we're going to go away uh, oh, yeah. I, I think the GIS department is already on the, its way out and I know that we've had prognostications about is GIS dead? I mean, I think I wrote an article 15, 20 years ago and it, 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 it's gone. It, it, needs to be, it needs to be understood that while we'll need people with geospatial capabilities, yeah. the idea of a department for geospatial is probably not really there. Yeah. I, I, I got to believe that that even what states are doing with appointing a geographic information officer, I still think in a couple of years, those folks are being absorbed into the mainstream IT departments. And if you're gonna keep it siloed, you're, the data is going to die. I, I think we all realize that that's yeah. not the way to put it. It does have to be integrated. It has to be yeah. managed in a certain way, just like any other type of data, but it does have to be integrated and, and you know, rise in the organization to, to be allowed to be used and not siloed. And, and to your point about, you know, again, the GIS department, I use this example often. A very good friend of mine uh, who I used to work with was a, a you know, a, a kind of a, a demo jock, you know, we call him an application engineer. He went to work for the city of San Mateo in California as the GIS department man, except he's no longer the GIS department manager, he's the director of IT. And he's not looking to hire geospatial people, he's looking to hire data scientists who can yep. work with geospatial data. Yep. And that's yep. the mindset, I think more and more, whatever it is, local government, state yep. government, and certainly corporations yep. are now yep. you know, getting towards. Yeah, I, I think as an industry, the real, again, to think about those guys, going back to the earlier question that coming out of university, what should you be doing? Workflows. I'll go back to workflows. We're not. We're very good at talking technology and patting ourselves on the back about how cool buffering and all these things are, but they're not workflows. We need to understand workflows for people. And I think geographers, and I'll just because I'm a geographer, I think geographers are really good dot connectors. We can actually go this, this, this. We can connect dots and understand things. And, and I think again, if we think about data, go back to data. There's a good example I worked on a few years ago where was we, we built a story using data and it was, I'll be brief, safety engineers and DOTs, they're focused on solving particular problems. They'll, under, they'll understand there's a collisions in a city and they'll try and solve it by putting a roundabout in. So, but they don't use geospatial tools particularly. They generally start with, a, the ones they do, they start with a flat map. They'll start with a 2D map and they'll get information from the police and they'll see on a map where those collisions are. They'll have heat maps and clustering. The next thing they do is they drive out to the intersection and start looking around and measuring and doing those type of things. The conversations I have with those guys thinking, you know, trying to dot, connect dots digitally. I said to them, if we could show you a, 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 an inter a group of intersections and you could understand, okay, there's 300, there's 300 crashes there, 20 there, but 50% of those crashes there fatalities that's probably the most interesting intersection they would they agreed so suppose we gave you the ability to click on the intersection in this two-dimensional flat map and you could see it in 3d how would that be they were like we've never seen that before so we did it for them they saw a 3d representation lidar of that intersection they could see overhanging vegetation etc but more importantly we could enhance that data with gis data so we put point data in there showing where the collisions were we actually even put some lidar information oh, you could visualize crashes in the intersection. So we had this 3D world that they had digitally that they could navigate and measure in. We could in add additional data to that. Then the third part of that was, would it be useful to see movement in that? Cars moving through, pedestrians, fantastic. So we gave them, we told them a data story there, use leveraging multidimensional data 
that allowed them not to have to drive out there to, to add additional data sets they couldn't if they were on the ground. I mean, those are the kind of stories I think that if we could be thinking through that stuff with customers, understanding their workflows and how we can enhance their workflows digitally using geospatial data, that's our future. That's the value. I think those are the most valuable people in organizations. Those guys that can think through that stuff and not a technology focus or data focus is bringing it all together and leading with customer problems or understanding customer problems. There's, someone came up with the term being in the middle of the information vortex. I like that. Well, and you, and you brought that type of information. You kind of connected the dots for mm. those engineers, right? I right. mean, yep. they had never seen it visualized in that way. Again, a good, you know, kudo for, for map visualization, but also just, you know, meshing data together yep. so that they could yep. actually appreciate what they knew, what you knew, you know, to arrive at something that's, okay, you know, too many fatalities right here, got to do something about it. So yeah, I, and I think you when, when we talk about when you talk about the map again, just talking about the map, there were maps in that conversation, but it was never driven by a map conversation. It was driven by a workflow conversation and fitting these obvious things in patterns, two D maps are wonderful for patterns, but you never we never really spoke about maps. We spoke about data that helps them get to arrive a conclusion more quicker and more accurately. So it was really that workflow, business workflow, that drove that. Yeah. Well, we got a few minutes left. Let's hit to the question that maybe we've been dancing around, and that is, has the broader IT industry, SaaS platforms, data platforms, AWS, Azure, or whatever it is, those cloud native platforms, are they becoming the leaders in geospatial data processing rather than the traditional GIS platforms? So are they leading the, the way in, for innovation or... Are we going to still, you know, the, the traditional vendors, are they going to still have a part to play as well? Oh, that's a tough question, Joe, that one. That really is the tough question. I, I really don't know. My suspicion is that the, the data scientists and those that are working in non-geospatial environments are the ones that are going to ultimately drive things. Um, yeah, I, I, I really, I, I, it's, I think that has to be obvious because there's so much, that's going into the, the, the you know, snowflake, all these other things, it seems like this niche over here is going to be overwhelmed by this much bigger thing. But it, I think, I suppose the story is, where do we fit into that bigger picture? It's not who's going to, it, yeah. I, I don't know where we're going to fit. I really don't. I worry about this becoming extinct, but our importance being lessened and lessened. I mean, I, I talked to Nadine at OGC and she's you know pushing to, get the standards and, and her organization better understood. But, you know, it's a challenge for her. I, I think we still sit in the corner on our own a little bit too much. What do you think? Well, I, I think we've, we've emerged. I think to the point where we've come out of the software era into the data era. And I think that we're headed towards the answer era where, you know, uh, it, it was hard back in the 90s, early 2000s, software was still king. You know, there were good solutions still being developed. You know, we had to work out, you know, bugs and user interfaces, cut, you know, user experience. Now there's, there's too much data. And we're, you're, you're right, we're in sort of a vortex of data. We're going to have to get beyond that. And right now, in this moment, the tools are those data platforms that can handle the volumes and broadcast that, you know, the, that information a little bit quicker. Now, what's going to happen in the future? Where is that? Where are we going to, where's the, where's the era of the answer? I, I don't know, but it, it, it could be borne out by more and better AI processes. It could be brought out by the metaverse. We, we just don't know. We're in that. I still think we're stuck in the data era. We got to figure out, you know, how we can help companies work with data and the answer era is going to be, you know, the two to five year period where, you know, in the uh, in the vernacular of Gartner, we've reached the uh, the the plateau of productivity, right? Yeah. We may be in the yeah. trough of disillusionment right now, mm -hmm. <laughs> but but I gotta believe that soon we're going to get to real productivity advantages. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, one final note from my side, I think that. The notion of platform as a service, as you've got the ArcGIS platform, that's a service. I've got data. I need an answer to a quick question. I need to, I need to use a service to get this answer back. 
there's a, there's a big future there, I think, for us. So we're moving away from the big platforms and, the, you know, you buy everything. You've got to buy everything in the meal. You could just buy this, you know, this dish and this dish. The other piece that I've really, this is further down the road, but blockchain and oracles in particular are going to be a very, very big deal where you can actually make calls from these contracts, smart contract, hybrid smart contracts, and call to a service like AccuWeather and find out, execute a, uh, an insurance contract instantaneously based on two inches of snow and you know zero degrees our sports games cancelled pay out immediately there's a big part there um so it's an exciting future but we're in an odd time at the moment i think i i would agree well matt let's leave it there always a fantastic conversation well hopefully we've queued up some people and tweaked their minds a little bit and uh, <laughs> we'll have them come back to us and beat on beat on our, us and our uh, our opinions as well <laughs> that's good right. well, thanks though. i enjoyed it thanks matt Thanks again for joining us on another On Point with Karim. And if you like today's podcast, please leave a comment in the comment box where this podcast is posted, which could be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. I hope you'll join us next time for another On Point with Karim, where we'll get On Point. <laughs>